so we are here for another week you want a quick little video this week um might be two videos this week i don't know depends whether or not i get motivation to work on the mg today because it needs to happen today or tomorrow um but we're gonna talk about one of the trucks that i picked up at beat the creek this one was a brand new truck that i picked up at beat the creek um enough focus on me let's turn focus on the truck so you guys are actually going to see everything in reverse what you guys are going to actually see last is what i did first which was i actually took the truck out and drove it so i could give you guys a decent review of it on camera because uh, i have never actually really driven this platform before and uh i wanted to be able to give you a fair review of how it is before i just said a bunch of things about it not really knowing a lot about it so this is the charisma sca dash one e it is uh, there they've got other more popular stuff um my understanding is they're a little bit more popular overseas in like the uk and stuff than they are here in the u.s they're just kind of starting to gain traction here um and i think they're more well known for its on-road cars or maybe airplanes or something they're not as well known for their scale trucks this is the only scale truck chassis they make um the body setting on top is their 2021 tacoma trd pro it is a very nice body i would say personally for myself one of my favorite things about the entire charisma lineup to a degree is is their bodies uh, they make some very nice fairly well detailed lexan bodies um I got one other truck out here I'll show you as an example um, because I think out of the two main companies that seem to make a van body, uh, one being Proline and the other one being Charisma, I think Charisma did it a lot better. Whereas I feel like the Proline body, while it doesn't look too bad, some of its dimensions are kind of wonky. The Charisma van, the Prairie Dog, is just spectacular looking. Um, I'll set that one up here. We'll talk about the bodies themselves, and then we'll talk about the chassis. So here's the other body in question. This is the Charisma SC A1E Pro. I thought Prairie Dog. It's Prairie Wolf. Um, this van body is just very nicely done. Um, the stickers obviously could use some work, but that's because... It's realistically, it's made for you to paint it yourself and then they just make an RTR version of it because all of this is raised for window trim and stuff. Ah, I'm not even showing you the truck. Um, but yeah, so this body isn't, I wouldn't say it was made to come as an RTR done the way they did it. Realistically, it was made to have clear windows and for you to paint the trim and stuff, which they obviously don't do because, well... No one really on a mass manufacturing scale, scale has that kind of time. But, I mean, like, you can't argue with how good these bodies look because, because a lot of it comes down to these grills, too. They do a nice hard plastic grill with actual light buckets and stuff. That's how this one is, too. This one, while the light buckets themselves are the Lexan, they're clear. They've got a detailed light bucket behind it. They've got a nice plastic grill that they put the Toyota sticker in upside down. It's even got the plastic skid plate on the bumper front. The, uh, the hood scoop in the front is hard plastic. It even has the detail of the little shark fin antenna in hard plastic. And the back bumper is also hard plastic. This bed is mounted separately from the cab. They're screwed together so you could, un you could unscrew it, make it a flat bed, make it a cage truck, whatever you want. Uh, do we got baby birds up there? Yeah. Yeah. Now yeah, we got baby birds up there. I want to see. Uh, I'm not going to lift you up to them because you need to leave them alone. Okay? Because if you get up there too close to them, the mommy bird won't come back. And that won't be good. Okay? So you'll have to wait till they get a little bit bigger and then you can see them that way. Okay? I know, that's not what you want to hear, but that's that's how it's got to be. That's what's best for them, okay? I hear you, boy. 
But I'm sure if you go back over there and make some bubbles, I'm sure they'll be excited to see it. Yeah. Okay. You just got to stay over there and do it. Don't bring it over here by them because you could hurt them with the bubbles. Okay? Because the soap's not good for them. Yeah, but it's okay. I don't want to. All right. Back to the trucks. So, obviously, neither, neither one of these have their stock wheels or tires on them. Uh, the one, the main one we're going to be talking about in the video, and you all actually see me drive, has a set of Enjoy beadlocks, 155s. These might, actually, these might be RC four-wheel drive beadlocks. I can't remember. And a set of General Grabbers that came stock on an Element. And this one has a old set of RC four-wheel drive beadlocks and uh, Mickey Thompson Baja MTZs. I loved these tires for a long time. Um, but that being said, while this one has a rather generic set of steel wheels, um, they are a beadlock and they're made to look like a just a generic steel wheel. Um, so the ones that come on this and the tires that are on them are kind of a letdown. That's why they're no longer on here. And that is the, the bodies are kind of, I don't want to say the beginning of the end of the good stuff about these trucks. But the bodies are, to me, the high point of these trucks, by far. Um, now, this one, on the other hand, while this one, the wheels were kind of a letdown, this one, the wheels aren't really a letdown. They fit it really well. It's a set of 1.9 beat locks that are designed based on the TRD Pro wheels that would have come on this truck. Now, the only reason why I took them off was because I don't have a better set of tires on them yet. And the tires that are on them, they're kind of hard. They kind of suck. Um, and I didn't, I, I just didn't even want to waste my time with them. Plus, these ones already had a little bit of weight in the front to kind of help it drive a little bit better. So I just swapped them on. Um, that's basically what I do on every truck I got anyway. So it just made sense. Now, from here, the chassis is not bad. I'll, I'll say that. But... You're also now you're talking about a chassis that is directly competing with the Element Enduro and the Axial SCX 10 II. It is a ladder frame straight axle chassis. And you could even argue it's competing with the 10 3 straight axle, but I don't feel like that's anywhere near a fair comparison. The other two are way more closely in common with this, with their design, than any of the factory straight axle 10 threes so let's get this body off and i'll show you more all right so we're going to start with the pros before we get any more negative than we already have it is servo mounted on the chassis which is a nice design it's got a very nice battery tray that fits a two cell very well the rest of the layout is pretty good the shock towers seem nice they've got tons of adjustability to adjust your ride height either via the shock tower itself or via the body body mounts front and rear has a very nicely sized i would say almost like heavy duty shock that works very very well uh the ladder frame chassis design is very basic of everyone um it comes with steel drive shaft stock which is very nice all right where were we so it's got metal drive shafts factory and they're pinned to where they won't come out so and they've got plenty of travel as you can see right here setting at full extension it's just about in the middle so it's got plenty of up travel and if you wanted to lengthen the suspension it's got plenty of down travel yet too at least in the front the back on the other hand is lacking a little bit that in that department at you know full droop but it's got plenty of up travel now i do believe we come to this one because i know this one is a slightly longer wheelbase it has a slightly longer rear drive shaft and actually has a little bit better time with that issue than the other one does um like i said these are the same exact chassis now the first oh okay and the uh the transmission transfer uh, now, along with the metal drive shafts, it also has metal links, uppers and lowers, front and rear, and a metal steering link 
going from the servo to the axle, but it does have a very thick plastic front link. Now this front link, I would say leave some to be desired, but we're going to talk about all this here in a little bit. The, uh, the center skid plate is also double drilled, so you can flip this transmission to have it front or rear. I do not believe these have overdrive in them. I'd have to look that up, but from what I've been told, they're just a one-to-one -one drive. So it's not sending overdrive to the front or the rear. I'm guessing that is so you can play around with weight distribution maybe if you feel the need to. Um, uh, the waterproof box does seem to do its job fairly well. I wouldn't say it's perfect. Uh, basically what it does, all the wires feed in and then there is a piece of foam right here that butts up against everything to basically waterproof it and then it's sealed right here. I would not call it 100% waterproof. I'd call it water resistant at best. Um, and the axles themselves seem to be fairly decent. Um, steering, steering is more comparable to an old axial 10-1 than it is to a 10-2. Uh, the steering throw just isn't as much as you would get with a old or with a newer 10-2. Um, now, you could possibly shave these bump stops down a little bit but as you can see here that is pretty much vertical you're not going to get any more steering out of it even if you wanted to using everything the way it is um so from there is where we really start getting into i want to call the things that they could do better but for an out-of-the-box truck, 90% of it, you're going to change yourself anyway. Um, that being, this out-of-the-box, they do provide you a battery. But it's a Nike, or a, yeah, it's, it's a nickel pack. So it predates LiPo still. Even though this is a brand new truck, it still came with a non-LiPo battery stock and a speed control programmed for not LiPo. So that was that's kind of a drawback. I, I wouldn't. Uh, it's we're in 2023. Yes, this is based off of a 2021 model, but even in 2021, lipo was the thing. It was not lipo's not new anymore by any means. So realistically, they're only including that pack. They call it RTR. And make you feel good, I think. Because it even came with a battery adapter to run it. The, they had uh, a battery adapter to go from this XT60 to an old Tamiya plug. Um, this is one of mine. Um, so, they're even back backwards adapting it to make it work with that. I don't, that's why I don't know why they don't just... Even throwing in a, you know, 2000 MAH you know lipo would have been better than the 25 or 3500 nickel pack they threw in so i just i feel like that that's a letdown on that end the speed control isn't too bad to work with because it is programmable but you have to open the box to be able to program it because you need to be able to pull the lead off of the uh off of the receiver the plug in the program card uh, once you can plug in the program card, it works great. It's a nice little receiver, but it's also only good up to 2S. So that could be better. The motor doesn't seem bad. The motor had plenty of power on 2S to do everything I wanted to do. Um, this does have some settings in it. Um, it's got like a beginner crawling setting, which I don't know exactly what that does, but it's got like adaptive braking and stuff in it too. So it can like sense when you're going downhill and it'll let it roll even when you're not on the gas, but it's it's like the drag brakes only at like 50% and just kind of letting it do its own thing. But you can tap and go directly into reverse or directly in the drive from there and the moment you let off it does whatever your drag brake setting is and then starts letting it do the adaptive braking. Um so that that in itself is nice i wish this had 3s capability that would make it so much better the servo 
the servo is weak. Um, because realistically, with some of the driving we're seeing we do, there is no reason why this plastic servo horn should have survived. It <laughs> it should have died today at the park, no questions asked, and uh, it survived. So that in itself tells you how weak this servo really is. And uh, but for an RTR truck. It did good. Everything works the way it should. And uh, I'll be honest with you. I, I think the truck only has two. One kind of a design flaw. Which is if you're nitpicky. And the other one is. I would say more critical design flaw. Based on their competition. So one of those being. It's four link. And this is the critical design flaw. It is four link with a chassis mounted servo. So no matter what you do, this thing has bump steer. It's not a lot. They did manage to tune 99% of it out. I'll give them that. But it's still there. This one, this one has it too. It's not quite as noticeable, but it's there. Uh, Whereas if they would have made it like most people do with a panhart mount on the chassis and on the axle, put a panhart bar in, I think steering wise it would be great. Even with the limited steering it does have. The other one being these pumpkins are huge. <laughs> um, if I remember, I don't think this thing is warm gear either. So I don't think there was really much of a need for this big pumpkin compared to everyone else. But that's what they have. Um, so I think they could they could do some gearing work here and make their pumpkins a little bit smaller. But that being said, look at how well all this comes apart. I mean, you've got, you know, the axle shafts. You know, the axle shafts come off of the, the pumpkin. The pumpkin opens up on its own. The four-length mount unbolts. The C-hubs unbolt. You know, back here, the lockout's on bolt. It's the same thing with everything in the middle. So there's a lot of part replacement you can do without replacing an entire axle tube. You know, or, or without replacing the entire axle. So that is good. I just, the pumpkin design could be better. Um, and it definitely lacks in the scale department on looks. Ugh. That got really wordy. Oof. But yeah, I, I gotta say that overall... For it, for it not being an axial product or an element product, um, I'm fairly happy with it. This is this was not a bad buy. Now, given I only bought it because of this body, if I would have been buying it because of the chassis, I probably wouldn't have bought it. Um, because, well, realistically, I'm an axial guy. I, I'm an, I'm honestly becoming very much an element guy. Um, so the chassis was kind of whatever to me. I really liked the body. And that's what brings me back to these bodies are really nice. Like, hang on, let me flip you around. So, as you can see here, it has the wires ran for the headlights. So, the lights work in the front, the lights work in the rear. The bed is bolted to the cab. So, if you really wanted to, you could make this into a truggy really easily. Um, and this is the very common, you know, 12.3 inch wheelbase. So, if you wanted to, with very minimal effort, and I have also seen it done using the factory holes, you could mount that body to a 10-2 chassis, or to an element chassis, and have a arguably much better chassis underneath of it. Uh, not to knock the Charisma chassis, because the Charisma chassis, as you will see here in the video in a little bit, did just fine on rocks. I didn't get to see how it did on dirt. We didn't get to go to where I would have liked to went to today, which is why I actually had both of them. I was planning on this being a review of both of these rigs, but, well, after driving this one on the rocks for a little while, I knew that one wasn't going to be any kind of a comparison. That is definitely more of a trail rig. Um, I believe the wheelbase is longer on this, too, if I remember correctly. Let's get these wheels and tires lined up. Oh, no! They're both a 12.3 wheelbase. I really thought that was longer than that. Um... 
So that is a more standardized wheelbase than I thought, which is kind of crazy in my mind, honestly. Uh, but yeah, it is just, it's not a bad little truck. Uh, I want to say, I got this one at Beats Creek, so I got it on sale, and I want to say it was $250, but retail price is like $329, and I believe retail on these, I'll have to look it up. Alright, on the Charisma website, the 2021 Tacoma is $369 new. The Prairie Wolf is $359 new. So you might as well say $360 and $370. Um, realistically, I wouldn't say they are necessarily a better buy than what you're going to get if you paid the same amount and bought a, we'll say, an SCX 10-2 Deadbolt or uh, the new Element Enduro SE Sport, what I, the, the, the basic bare bones element that is out currently um i don't feel like you're getting a better chassis for that money but in both cases you're getting a very much nicer body um so to me that makes it worth it uh if you're looking for your first trail truck experience this is absolutely a good chassis if you've never messed with the other ones I, and even if you have, I wouldn't say don't get it because of that. I would say definitely get it or just get on their website if you really like these bodies and just buy the bodies because both bodies are available. I want to say that one was like 60 bucks on their site and that one was a little bit more than that. Um, so you could just buy the bodies. And when you do that, they don't have holes in them. <laughs> you can drill the holes wherever you want then. Um, but yeah. Yeah, alright, okay. That's enough of me rambling about these things. Obviously, you guys are getting the hint that I like them. They're a nice little truck. Uh, let's get to the uh, the driving portion of this, shall we? And you guys are going to get to see me beat this poor little guy up on some rocks.
So now that you guys have seen that, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you uh, get your opportunity to get your hands on one of these, whether it be brand new or, you know, uh, just get the bodies, or you find one of them used, definitely snag it up. They're worth a shot trying. I, uh, I am definitely not disappointed that I got them now. Uh, I am, and I'm definitely ready to go try that one out. So because while this one wasn't bad, I feel like that one's going to be a little bit more fun to watch go down the trail. So, being said, thank you guys for watching. See you next time. Have a good weekend.